Come here. It's okay. <laughs> that was the way. <laughs> what the heck? Freaking amazing. It kind of got like a bacony flavor to oh, it. Oh man, that's freaking amazing. Oh, good day, guys. I'm gonna take you along on a season of deer hunting with me in my area. Last year I filmed a little bit and I wasn't successful. Obviously, it's early, so what I'm gonna do is make some adjustments. I'm making some trails back here. We got a trail going back this way. I'm actually on the cabin property right now, and the deer actually have been using this trail. I came back here and I flattened out kind of a path. There's not a really good, well defined trail. I do have better better ways of getting out to the fields than through here. I have my tree stand up here, and what I was hoping is that the deer would come out through here. But what I noticed instead was that the deer were going to the fields out over there, way further. The short story is that I'm actually gonna pull the stand down. So I gotta do a little bit of work to get this stand down. That's why I got the GoPro. So I'll switch over there. There now, we'll get this uh, stand down. What I'll be able to do is get the bucks coming into the doe bedding areas picking deer off. So far I've only got a doe, a fawn, and a, and a spike, spike slash fork who moved into the area just recently. It's not like fishing where you go out once and you're done and you hopefully catch something. A, sea, a deer is a, a whole season you do your work. Well first things first is we need to take the stand down. Two ratchet straps for two seasons. What I do is I start off with one and then I come back the next year and I add a second one and I loosen off the first one and that gives me some insurance from maybe the first one being damaged or rotten. So I'm gonna re remove all my straps. I'm not sure why I had this strap here. I think I think this one I used to hold my quiver. Always be cautious coming in and out of the tree. It's advisable to use a harness all the time. I always use a tree harness or a harness when I Set up in the tree for good. There we go. This is a freaking super heavy tree stand. It's actually made out of old barbecue parts. The cheapy parts with lots of bolts because I was poor when I built it. Well, there we go. We got the stand down safely on the ground. Already pulled the ladder back through the grass already. I want to quickly show you this uh, stand, how it works. <laughs> you want to build one of these, you're more than welcome. I'm not sure if I would recommend them at this point or not, but it gave me 10 years and it cost me 10 bucks. I know now they go on they go on sale pretty good and they're a lot lighter. At the time it was hard to come by a tree stand, they were super expensive. Uh, these are the uprights of an old barbecue, the cheapy ones. Some of the other ones I found at a scrap yard, but it's uh, been all bolted together. There's some couple of old chains and uh, it works really good. But uh, it's on the heavy side, it's cumbersome side. The platform's not the greatest because of how spaced out these were. The, the 10 bucks was the bolts. So yeah, 10 years, 10 bucks, not too bad. Should just fall down after we get it out of the tree here. There we go. Now we're back safely on the ground. We'll pick our spot with the ladder because I roughly know where I want to be. And then we'll come back for the stand. I don't know if I'm going to get it up today or not. The new trail starts right here. It's not super well used, but over time it should get better. I find hunting in the forest is a lot more productive, especially because cover around here is in very short, limited supply. Lots of fields, it's the cover. And because there's lots of fields and very little cover, I find that the deer like to stay in the woods as long as they can. Let's pull the tree stand over there first to where I'm figuring the general vicinity I do need to get up into a spot where the deer are not going to see me very easily. Camera set up on this tree here and there was a fair amount of activity right where that squirrel is right there. It was sort of, the deer were kind of kind of squirting up here, but uh, it's not super open here. I'm roughly where I want to be, there's the trail that goes back toward the cabin and I've kind of scouted over here across the log a little bit. Um, the deer was bedding over here a little bit. It's not a good idea to bed, to uh, hunt the beds, just being honest with you here, but it's what we got. And then I picked out a pine tree that might work over there. Um, and then putting some information together with the trail camera that used to be over here. I know that Doe was spending time on this side here and then I actually found her bed. And of course I'm ruining the bed by doing this, but you can actually bend down and you can find some little tiny deer hair in there. And that's pretty, conclusive evidence a lot easier to find in the winter so if that's something you're up for doing and then there's another bed 
over here because that was the fawn and the doe bedded together. So I know where she beds. Uh, she's not here now because I obviously booted her out. Uh, whether she was bedded here now or not was it could be you know up for debate. She might have just snuck out uh, when she heard me coming in and they'll hear and smell people predators and all that good stuff. I mean, there's not a whole lot of options here. I don't know how, if you can tell how thick it is in here, but if I put a stand in here, basically your hair has to walk by. That I can make a shooting lane out to, this is the, the trail that we made out this way, if she uses it. But it seems like what she's doing is just going for a straight line. Honestly, I probably won't make my decision today even because I can't make a solid decision. So what I might I might do is like clean up here a little bit, get rid of some of the sticks so they, they get the idea to cross here and then clear out some pathways and maybe wait a little bit longer. You're gonna have to stick with it because this is what it takes to get a deer in, in the neighborhood that I'm in. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. Could just go sit on the field, which a lot of people do, but I find that boring and not particularly productive. Welcome back. Finally found a spot to put this tree stand in the thick woods here. I've got a camera on this trail coming out of the swamp, which I made. I made I make all the trails back in through here. And I noticed there was a buck coming across perpendicular across the trail. So what I decided to do is uh, follow that trail back and extend it a little bit so we can potentially draw some deer. I don't care what I shoot. If I shoot a buck or a doe, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I'm not gonna hunt here today just because I messed up this area. I've actually been working on the stand for a couple days now. Ratchet strap uh, was missing and broken. The seat was falling off and then I need, I need to brush it in. These deer around here, it's not easy to kill these deer. Not at all. These deer are spooky. They look up, they smell, they sniff. If it's a doe, she's got fawn, she's not so actually if it's a doe period it's hard to shoot a, any deer whatsoever so if i shoot a small buck i'm good with it actually the probably best chance i got a it's a fork buck a little fork buck a little six point i got a big well not big big for here big big reasonable big eight point coming around the stand so it's up for grabs and uh shotgun season's right around the corner it's coming up next week, so I'm going to do the orange. I don't care if I shoot a deer with a gun. And it's been three or four years now since I shot a deer. Granted, I haven't been focusing a lot on the deer hunt this year because I got so many other things on the go. I'm actually trying to shoot a squirrel out of the tree stand as well with a slingshot, <laughs> which is uh, which is fun. Uh, lots of misses, but hey. So I've been bringing walnuts out with me, chuck the walnuts out a uh, tree stand, and then whatever comes by, <laughs> take a shot at. It passes the time real good. It doesn't seem to bother the deer too much. Because uh, I've seen deer every time I've shot at a squirrel, well, I sh every time, but you know, most of the time. So it, do it doesn't it doesn't affect anything. I just put the slingshot away half an hour before uh, sunset, and right through, and doesn't seem to bother the deer at all. It just sounds like a twig breaking or whatever. As long as you're not walking around, I don't think the deer care into it. So I'm 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 right in the thick of things, in the swamp where I love it. The squirrel stands actually up on the hill, uh, so I'll hunt there too. But this is a better bow stand got kind of a 75% shot range. I can shoot on the trail. I don't want to shoot on this trail. It's a little close, but hey, it's the only tree I could find. So I'll be able to shoot over my right shoulder and left shoulder. So any deer cruising here, not wanting to get out in the open, I should be able to get. There's corn up over on the other side. And I got some deer coming through over there, which is actually where I moved this stand from. So I might grab another stand at a property. I got kicked off another property every year. Property getting sold, guys move in. So I might pull some stands and then get this rate rigged up. This is Kevin's property. So anyway, one, one point in time, I'm just going to smoke a deer real quick. I've uh, done little things a little bit different with the Browning trail cameras. I'm finding still a deer kind of spooking on them. I don't know if this itself is a spec ops or not, but I know they've been, they've been keying in on the, the light and whatever. So I don't know. I don't think they're all spec ops. But we're putting them a lot higher. So it's probably six, seven, eight feet, and then the trail is way over here. So it's quite a ways off the trail. So what I'm hoping is it doesn't bother the deer so much. Like I know if I put it right on the trail, I'll get better camera pictures. I get better pictures, better video. It's just that, um, well, that's the cat and mouse game. This year, new this year. So moving the cameras all the time. So I go and put it in one spot and then get a few pictures and then I move it to another spot. Get a few pictures and move it to another spot. So that's my rule now. I'm not gonna keep a camera where I'm going to hunt. So I'm gonna keep that camera over there for a few days just to see what's passing through here because I did make a lot of disturbance. And as soon as this trail gets hit again, pull that camera down and start hunting. It's always a good idea to look at your tree stand from the perspective that the deer will be seeing your tree stand from. 
So I've been having deer come through here and actually embellish the trail. I made it better. You shouldn't do this during the season, but hey, I'm just gonna do it because I'm getting this set up, the spot set up for the long term. So what I'm expecting to happen is the deer is gonna come through here. Once it gets past this one tree right here, I can draw. See, I don't know if you can see the stand, probably not, right? It's hidden. So once I can draw here and then the deer steps out and it continues this way, I've got my perfect quartering away shot right here. Let's switch over to some action. Let's figure out what's going on. Next time I turn the camera on, hopefully I'm shooting a freaking deer somehow. Hunter orange, bull hunt, I don't care. Dress up like a pumpkin, I don't care. Let's get it done. Get it done. We brushed in the squirrel stand. We call it the squirrel stand because we built it for deer a couple of years, well, last year actually. And uh, I don't think I ever saw a deer out of it, but uh, I had Jeremy come up and he shot a pile of squirrels out of it. And uh, we're gonna bring this chair up and my bow. Uh, if a deer walks by, we're gonna shoot the deer. I was on a milk crate before. It's gonna be a lot more comfortable. In fact, I cut the back legs so that they were long or shorter, shorter than the front legs. So it'd be reclined. So I can get up there and pretty much nap. So that's what we're gonna do. Have some snacks, listen for some squirrels, and maybe, who knows, maybe I'll get a deer this year. That's on the goal. I got a doe tag this year, so anything that walks by, I'm gonna try to get. Oh man, this is freaking awesome. I should have done this earlier. Backrest, this chair, freaking sweet. I actually can't really see over the edge here so well bushed in but that also means nothing can see me up here too and there's lots of dry leaves down there so all I'm gonna do is listen for stuff to happen Well, it's day three of the deer hunt, the gun hunt. And uh, didn't see anything this morning. Came out the same cut cornfield, didn't see anything yesterday. Uh, yesterday morning, I was at uh, the cabin property, my brother's, Kevin's, Modern Self-Reliance. And uh, walking in, I actually walked in on the deer in the dark. So I had the little glowy lights at me. And then uh, after I got set up in the stand, I had another deer come through in the dark before shooting light. So, so far I'm skunked, even on the shotgun. I'm gonna head over to the cabin today, 
do some maintenance there. Oh, somebody got a deer. <laughs> That's the third shot I think this morning. I'm gonna stick it out here for another half hour, 45 minutes. Obviously the deer is still moving somewhere. I've heard, uh, I guess that's 17 shots in the last three days, including this morning. So that's a lot of deer going down. Unfortunately, none for me. But uh, here's another one. <laughs> I should go sit back down and see what happens. My luck's not been good. I was sitting over here a couple of nights ago. I had a doe come in. She came across the field here through the pines. I was sitting over there in the Pine Island and she managed to sneak up on me without me seeing her in this field. So now I'm over here hoping to catch them off uh, coming off a soybean field up on the other side. But uh, I just keep going. No luck in the bow hunt so far. No luck in the gun hunt. But hey, things might change. just tried to go after her. But she figured me out, went that way. I think she might be bedded in here. There's a bed's all in here.
shots in her. She better be dead. Wow. That hurts. First time shooting a scope at a deer. I paid the price. Back at the car, I shed all my clothes, sent a couple messages out, beauty boat hunting from the cabin here and having a good bunch of people in my tribe is that I can call on them. So I got Kevin on the way and uh, Scott, he's on the way too. So we're just waiting for those guys to show up. We're gonna go check. I did a quick look around. I did find some lung blood. So that's a good sign. We're off to a good start, but uh, I, it's been about 45 minutes or so I waited a half an hour at the stand went to look around I Gave a little bit more it doesn't hurt deer's not going anywhere, but it's hot today. It's 15 Celsius It's not hanging weather So it's gonna be a little bit of an emergency getting this thing Deboned and in the fridge. So that's gonna be the adventure right now. Hey, we did it. Well, we we hope we did it We got to find the thing still that's the biggest part of the hunt really is to recover <laughs> have a better look at that mark that's uh, for me trying to get the whole thing in my eye so I could see. <laughs> and that's actually the edge of the tactic cam. And it's not the tactic cam fault, it's <laughs> my fault. I haven't shot any live animals or anything actually with the scope, except for like with the 22, but that doesn't count because there's no freaking recoil on that. That 870, we've got 870 mounted with the tactic cam and uh, I've got the right on scope. Uh, works good as a combo for sure. <laughs> Just gotta not lean forward so much. At least I didn't get a black eye. I'm not gonna get a black eye from that. It's not It's not in the eyeball enough. It's just around the edge. I got in a fight. <laughs> I think I won. So if you guys wanna get your hunt on film, you don't wanna mess around with the cameras. I, I, I know I've lost deer because I've been messing around with cameras. This is the camera to go with. This is the tact cam. It mounts directly to your scope. You can actually mount it to the uh, end of the barrel too. I use that for a grouse. It works super good. All you do is press the button, see that light flashing? That means that the video is recording through the scope. It doesn't interfere with anything. It fits uh, just around the scope with a couple Allen keys, uh, Allen nuts, screws right there. You tighten them up and you're all set to go. There's an app you can link it up to your uh, phone and then you can see exactly what it sees down through the barrel here. And uh, basically all you do after that is press the button one time. It'll go on flash. You press it again, it goes on standby. And then after a while on standby, it completely shuts off saving your battery. So all you have to do is press the freaking button to fire it up and you're recording. As long as it's flashing, you're all good to go. And it uh, comes with two batteries and a charger, USB charger. I don't know. I, I'm tempted to just hunt with this from now on. I didn't even turn on the main camera except to film it up myself. I didn't bother trying to get the deer. I've messed up too many times. The, uh, this is the way to go. Talk to Cam. It's the way to go. And the right on scope, perfect combination. I'll uh, link those all down below as well. So it's just a doe. That's all right. <laughs> but I wasn't going to get picky. So. All with the season coming down to an end. I know. I didn't want to go back to the bow. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's been three years since I got anything. So. But uh, confirmed lung blood. There's a big chunk of lung matter. Oh, that's good. So. And I think I got two shots in it. But uh, I can't confirm the first one was a head. But I know one of them was so. Like this deer's hitting the lungs 100%. Dude. Oh, look at up here. <laughs> oh, that's done, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a dead deer for <laughs> sure. You think I got it? Yeah. <laughs> so it shouldn't be too far. No, it's yeah. going to be another like 20 yards past your marker. Yeah, I think so. I just stopped over here. And initially, I put some toilet paper up in the tree and. It shouldn't be far. No, it's not. <laughs> that's a good trail. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's a good trail right there. There's like a, a bunch of 
stuff. <laughs> Lung matter and uh, bubbles. <laughs> you think it's done? It's definitely done. <laughs> All right. He's taking his time. He's very enthused about this, isn't he? Did you see any of it? It's a major trail. What am I looking for? Blood. Blood. Oh, I thought they were supposed to drop right away. That's only if you hit them in the legs. <laughs> or the heart. Looks All right. like they You're... hit you in the head. Are you ready to go or what? What's on your head there? Yeah, it hit me in the head. Did the deer get you? It's right here, Chris. Well, you found some blood there? There's a scope. <laughs> I'm not messing around this time. I, I told you, I leaned right into the scope. Oh yeah, lots of lots of lung blood and bubbles. The thing about this is uh, you got to take your time. And that's what we've been doing. I waited a half hour in the tree stand before I even did anything. We just got to figure out where it changes direction. And this is the spot where, right here where I marked with the tissue paper. Always bring tissue paper to your marker unless you got a lot of technology. And then we got to figure out where it went from this point where I kind of, I lost it. So this is probably where it kind of panicked and jumped in the bush and it could really be 20 yards away and i didn't really go past here so it could be five yards for all it, it could be it could be right in the brush pile here That was the what, what the heck? That's weird. So from that experience in the past, what the, what will happen is the fawn will actually go to its mother, and it will lay down beside it. So I'm assuming this doe is just somewhere over here. He's still hanging out over there. Is that a is that a button buck? Uh, I'm what, not 100 percent sure. I couldn't tell if it was. It looked like it might oh, have no, been a button. I can still see spots on it. <laughs> that you're lucky I didn't shoot it again. Yeah. <laughs> again. <laughs> we would have had more than one deer down. No, that's why I want to make sure when I looked at it. <laughs> well, that's crazy. That's an experience. I, <laughs> that's funny. There's a tree stand right there. Yeah, Who's tree stand there? Yeah, we're, on the, we're on the edge here now. Well, guys, we got a we got a big chunk of meat here, but sadly, it's not from the deer that I shot. Uh, I'll tell that story in a second. I'm gonna cut this chunk of meat up. We're gonna throw it in the smoker. Kevin rebuilt it. Yeah, he burnt it down. That's a long story too. You can go check out his channel, Modern Self Reliance, figure out how that happened. But it's all rebuilt now. Eat roadkill deer. It's a roadkill deer. And uh, everything's gonna balance out in the world. It's a sweet knife uh, subscriber sent to me, Christoph from Germany. He hand makes, can crafts these only for friends and family. So he, he's not even trying to make a pile of money by sending this to me. It's a freaking beautiful knife. I told him if I shot a deer, I would use it. But you know what? That might not happen until next year. So here's your shout out, buddy. Thank you. It's sweet knife, super sharp, works awesome. I love it. Welcome to the new smoker. It looks very much like the old smoker, except it should be bomb proof this time. It's basically a box down in here. We shove that full of fire, and then there's a tube that goes over this way to the smoke chamber over here. And uh, you can see why it burnt down the first time. It was all made of wood on the inside. So there we go. Hopefully it's not too, too hot in here. It's warm, whoa, it's warming up a little bit. Get the racks out here so we don't have to smoke ourselves out. All I did here was uh, I cut the meat. Um, this one's cr uh, with the grain, so this one's gonna be a chewy one, but it's only because I didn't have the size to cut through uh, with the grain or against the grain. Against the grain, this'll, this won't be as chewy. It'll break apart a little easier. It's up to you. Jerky, you make it how you want to make it. If you want a little bit chewier, a little bit firmer, then uh, cut with the grain. And if you want it to be not so chewy, cut against the grain. I don't know if I said that right, but I don't care. You guys got the idea. And then we're gonna, this is already partially cooked, probably mostly cooked. It's already been mostly smoked, actually, because this is the roadkill deer that we found. And uh, we actually uh, spit roasted the entire thing you can see it's still a little bit red on the inside, which is why I wanted to give it the final treatment. And we wanted to try the smoker out too. So we're gonna load this thing up. I don't know if we have enough racks yet. We're still obviously in the infantile stage of smoking meats. But once we have all this sorted out and we figure out this works, we're gonna be doing this a lot more often. And now we wait. All right, boys and girls. So I wanna tell you the story. I got the gun here because it's an important integral part of the story. We tracked the deer for 200 yards. It went over a bridge, went on the neighbor's property. We actually went and got the neighbor. After looking for a couple hours on our own, Kevin, Scott, and I, we tracked it all the way up into, actually it's more, probably more like 400 yards. I haven't figured out exactly. It, it was a long way. 
and there was a steady amount of blood each each time it was definitely long blood at least one long that's what i've come to the conclusion is i probably only clipped one lung that will kill a deer but it'll take a while for that to happen the vast majority of you watch this channel because you you know it's real and you want me to keep it real so here's me being real we grid searched then from uh 8 a.m all the way through 3 p.m what we figured happened somebody comes for a walk every morning around this time 8 30 or around 9 9 30 and by the time we had got up there it was about that time so I figured what happened was the deer came up on the bluff and then somebody coming, approaching from the back actually pushed that deer away. Now a deer that's pushed and injured can go a long, long ways in a very, very short period of time. So what we figured happened was that somebody pushed that deer back over the swamp or some direction or across the road even, because we went from road to road to road. So that brings up the next point is, uh, well, one lung. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means this gun wasn't shooting right. And I went back on Facebook. It's, it's obviously, it's been a couple days since the deer saga. And I asked people for some ideas of what was going on. So we put a couple of rounds uh, through the gun. Here's the shot here. This is, this is what I was aiming for. I made a little hole here. And ended up with two shots, uh, high and right and, and high and right again. These are obviously a lot closer, uh, but still way far off. I got to asking people online what, if they had any ideas. And one of the ideas mentioned was if the barrel was loose. So this is uh, a Remington 870 Express. It comes in with inter interchangeable barrel. So it's a smooth barrel, rifle barrel. The rifle barrel is obviously for Sabot slugs. I'm using a Winchester uh, 20 gauge, uh, high velocity, hollow point. But the, the, the gun itself here or the barrel itself, you can remove it with just this little thing here. And what I didn't realize was that this barrel was only very, very slightly loose. And that won't affect things when you're shooting a uh, shotgun, uh, shot, but when you're shooting um, a slug out of the rifle barrel, it apparently can affect it as much as three inches. I can't know specifically when that barrel became loose, but I, I'm guessing probably during the many hunts. And so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, something as small as having a slightly loose barrel, very slightly, like I said, can have a very dramatic impact. And uh, finally, I wanna leave off with the fact that the scope is very solidly mounted. It was professionally mounted. It's got uh, screws all the way through. The, the rings are all tight. This was professionally done before the gun hunt. However, the world is right again because the deer we're eating today is roadkill and the deer that's now in the woods is gonna be feeding all the wildlife that didn't eat off the deer that I took off the road. So if you catch my drift, everything's right in the world. Nothing goes to waste. Long story short is live and learn. And uh, if I lose some subscribers out of this, that's okay. The reason I do the videos is to learn. Let's go see how that venison is doing because I'm getting hungry. Whoa. Oh, 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 look at that smoke. Let's see how this is coming along. Ooh, look at that. They had nice grill marks on there. I really should have put wadobo spices on them. Actually, I don't think it's too late. I can still do that. We got the turbo. This is the mega giant container of wadobo. Let's see if we, if it's not too late, we can smoosh it in there a bit. Oh yeah, it pats in. Alrighty, well I found Kevin and uh, it's been smoking for a little bit longer here. Reach in there and grab a piece. Oh, that's, that's tasty actually. It kind of got like a bacony flavor to oh, it. Oh man, that's freaking amazing. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to try for another deer. I have both season now. It's going to be a lot harder. You can subscribe or not, I don't care. I don't care anymore. Catch you on the next one. It's good. It's really good.